Well, good morning. My name is Jeremy, and I am so grateful to be a part of this worship time together. It is an absolute pleasure for me to be able to uh, spend time worshiping and praying and reading the scriptures together. So thank you so much for the opportunity for me to be able to lead you in this time today. Uh, what I feel like God has put in my heart is this idea of lamenting. Our family recently just recognized the need to actually walk through a season of lamenting and to do it intentionally, to not just be sad, to not just have anxiety, to not just have worry, but to say, hey, you know, all of these things that are a part of the human condition, they don't surprise Jesus, they don't surprise God, and what we can actually do is to bring all these things before him. He's ready for it. He's not surprised by it. This pandemic didn't catch him off guard. And so what we actually get to do in this season is to be able to lament and to lament the right way. And so what I'd love to do with you is to actually walk you through what our family does, what we've done to lament well, to not just sit in our sadness, but to be intentional about walking through this season and learning everything that he wants us to learn and receiving everything that he wants us to receive. What's interesting is that in the book of Psalms, about 150 chapters, about a third of those are songs of lament. I'm actually going to grab my Bible. Uh, Psalm 55, a prayer of lament. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. It's a crying out. My thoughts trouble me. I'm distraught because of what my enemy is saying because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Man, I know so many of us that are feeling these exact thoughts right now. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. It's a song of lament. It's saying, God, this is hard. I'm sad. I'm hurt. I'm broken. I feel like the enemy is surrounding me. And so what I want to do is lead you through a very simple, this is like a four-step process that we do, and it's all connected to what I believe God wants to walk us through in the scriptures and in time with him, of how to lament. And the very, very first step that we do with our family is we turn to God. Because it's super easy to focus our eyes on the thing that is causing us anxiety. It's super easy to focus in on the thing that's causing us a pain and fear and anxiety. But if we take step one, we take our focus off of the circumstance and we put our focus onto Jesus and singing this song to him. beginning can't control what tomorrow will bring but I know here in the middle is the place where you promise to be yes you do Lord not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you are will you meet me here again mm. oh As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. 
Like the sun shaping the shadow In my weakness your glory appears Yes it does Not enough Unless you come Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want Is all you Father, we believe that. We believe that right here and right now, you are filling the homes of every single person watching and every single person who is your child. We believe that, God, you are right there with them. So, God, I just pray that there would be an overwhelming sense of your spirit and of your power in every single home right now. Thank you that we get to turn to you and you meet us right where we're at. I pray that we would sense and know and believe that your spirit is with us at every moment of the day. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Now the second part of this exercise of lamenting well is to express your sorrow. It's to literally tell Jesus what is hurting your heart right now. And I've got to tell you, when I walk through this, um, I actually walk through it with a bit of shame. I kind of tended to view it as, well, this spectrum and this idea that this is the very worst that's happening to people in this season and this is like minor inconveniences and I was maybe hovering somewhere around here and there's no possible way that God uh, could be interested in here when so much of this was happening. And what I felt God uh, say to me is, is he's not on a spectrum of sorrow. He doesn't just save his goodness for those of us who are experiencing the worst of this situation. No, we're his children. So when I had the freedom to bring my sorrows to Jesus in the fullness of what they were, he met me. And so I want to offer that invitation to you. It could be anything that you have experienced in this season that brings you sorrow. Trust me, Jesus wants to hear it. He wants to come alongside you. He wants to walk uh, this journey with you. And I think for many of us, we haven't paused long enough to actually recognize the loss that we've experienced. Whether it's literally the loss of life of people that we love or the loss of something that we had planned. And there's nothing that we are going through that lands on some sort of spectrum that God looks at and determines if he's ready or willing to meet you. No, instead we can bring every part of who we are knowing that God cares deeply for us. So what I want us to do in this step is to actually name, to literally name the loss that we're experiencing, to name the sorrow. And I'm talking everything, everything from a missed graduation and a wedding to the, to the loss of life. Every single thing that you can be experiencing now matters to him. And I want you to be able to bring that before your Father in heaven because he cares deeply for you. So Jesus, right now, I pray that you would search our hearts. God, I pray that you would illuminate the parts of our souls where we haven't lamented the sadness where we haven't named the thing that is bringing us sorrow in this season. Maybe we thought uh, even for a minute that you were too busy or dealing with way too many uh, things right now. Maybe we felt guilt and shame for naming something that isn't at the highest end of this invisible spectrum that we created. But I pray right now, God, that what we would see and what we would know is that you are a God who cares about every single one of us. You care about our problems no matter how big or small we make them. You care. So lay down your burdens, lay down your pain, and all who are broken, lift up your face, oh wanderer, come home, you're not too. So lay down your hurts, lay down your heart, come as you are. So lay down your burdens, lay down your pain. And all who are broken, lift up your face. too far 
So lay down your heart, lay down your heart, and come as you are. Jesus, thank you so much that we get to lay down our sorrows before your feet. That there's nothing too big or too small. That instead you look at us through the eyes of love. And you have compassion for our suffering. So Jesus, I just pray right now that we would take uh, these sorrows and these burdens. And that we would lay them at your feet. It's in your name we pray, amen. And so now what we'll do is we'll take those sorrows and we'll ask for help. That's step number three. Because we don't want to just hold on to those sorrows. We don't want to just uh, dwell in them, linger in them. While it's appropriate for us to have sorrow, what Jesus is inviting us into is to cast our burdens onto him. He can carry them. And so that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna cast our burdens onto Jesus's shoulders. Let's worship together.
We cast our cares on you For there's power in your presence Oh, there's power in the presence of the living God There's power in your presence So I pray, oh God, that right here, right now, that the power of your presence would be enough that when we lay our sorrows at your feet, that you'll partner with us, you'll stand with us to face them. We don't have to live in anxiety or fear or depression, God. But instead, we can cast our cares on you and you can do the supernatural. God, I pray that we would stop trying to do the part of this story that is not ours. And that's the supernatural part, but instead, God, what we would do is we would submit to the power of your Holy Spirit. And we would let you do what only you can do in this season. We love you, Lord. We cast our cares on you. And we pray together. Amen. Amen. And so the fourth step of lamenting together is to trust God. The fourth step is that. It's to say, we've turned towards you, God. We've fixed our eyes on you away from our circumstance and we're looking at Jesus now. And now we're naming our anxieties, we're naming the things that have caused us sorrow in this season. And then we cast those things upon Jesus because he said that he can take them. We partner with Jesus. We walk in step with Jesus. And the fourth thing is to trust. To trust that we don't have to be the ones to figure it out. To trust that we don't have to do more than what he's asking us to do. And most times he's asking us to be available to hear from him. And to trust him. Look at this proverb. This is Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him. And he will make your paths straight. It doesn't say that we'll make our path straight. It says that he will make our paths straight. So this is how we're gonna close our time together today. This is how we're gonna close our exercise of lament, is by declaring that we're not the way maker. He is. Way make, miracle work, promise keep, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our I worship you, 
I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, it is waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, oh I do. I worship you. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, oh I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, oh, I worship you, many Lord. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you, Lord, oh, I worship you. Stop. 
God, we are so grateful that we don't have to be the ones to figure it out, but we can trust you, God. And I pray that as we walk through this intentionality of lamenting, God, that we would land at knowing that you're the way maker, that we can trust your word, and that it's who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you that Jesus is the reason all of this is possible. That without the sacrifice on the cross, we would still be charged the wages of our sin. But because of Jesus, the sin is upon his shoulders. The burden is his, the anxiety is his. And we can trust that you are God and you will be God in this season. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.